and yet it wasn't in our lives, and that, that was lame. So we figured if we just kind of could make room for ourselves to play with this, we could actually build these, these things which were, up until that point, just fiction. And we could also push them beyond the best thing we could imagine in fiction now once we started exploring what holograms could do. Um, so I'm going to use two terms interchangeably here. Uh, so one is this idea of a light field. Um, a light field is this idea that um, in a room, like in this room where we are, there's a lot of rays of light bouncing around. Those rays have wavelength, they have direction, and they have an origin point. And a light field is the sum of all of those rays. Um, it's a lot of information. And the big idea, like behind the original, like Dennis Gabor 1947 hologram, is this was a technique to capture a light field and to replay that light field. And it's playing on this idea that our eyes are not reality sensors, our eyes are just light sensors. And if you can recreate the 3D pattern of light inside of a scene, your eyes can't tell the difference. It feels like you're there. It feels like you're looking at that object, at that scene. Um, this is a really powerful idea. And when you start thinking about it, you can't shake it. It's like a disease. And I've just infected all of you, and I'm not sorry at all. Um, so I'm going to use these two interchangeably. In the event we have any hologram purists in the audience who are going to view what I say as blasphemy, or that these are not real holograms, come at me, bro. Like, I use that because it's a sci-fi idea. Because this is the thing that in our heads, we're like, oh, you're showing me a 3D scene that's not really there, and it feels like it's really there. Um, I understand these are two different things. I'm going to use it anyway. I'm not going to apologize, because we called our last display a light field display, and we got crickets. So now we're just going to embrace that idea. Um, so uh, let's start off talking about the hologram dream. Everybody knows, uh, knows the hologram dream. Uh, like, we've all seen this thing. Uh, OK, anyway, you know, that, you know what she says. Um, uh, and you know, if you were born after 1990, this might be your version of the Hulk. That's Mark II. Shall I store this on the Stark Industries Central Database? I actually don't know who to trust right now. Till further notice, why don't we just keep everything on my private server? Working on a secret project, are we, sir? I don't want this winding up in the wrong hands. Maybe mine can actually do some good. OK, anyway, so what's showing there, what this fiction is hinting at, is the idea that we're not always going to be staring at a two-dimensional piece of glass when we talk to people we care about via technology, when we design, when we work with technology to create things, that that is something we do right now. Just like 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you would have said that we're not going to be using slide rules forever. That's a pretty good bet. Um, and lo and behold, it came true. Um, the same thing, like our, our main paradigm of creating with technology, that's not going to always be the same. And so that's kind of what's exciting about exploring this, both in fiction and in building the real thing and starting to push to make everything from visualization to creation tools that work in native 3D because a lot of times we're designing things that are 3D. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about light fields. Um, so I mentioned this light field, the idea behind it is that it's a 3D pattern of light. Um, and a 3D pattern of light, uh, when we take a normal camera, we're not capturing anything close to the full light field. We capture rays that happen to hit a camera lens, that happen to hit the pixel on the camera. Um, and a light field is actually capturing more information than a single 2D picture captures. Um, let me give you an example. OK, so let's take a look. Imagine we have a brick wall. I was going to use a brick wall, and then I realized we didn't have a brick wall here, so I, I put a virtual brick wall. Don't be fooled. Um, eh, it's too far. It was complex. Um, Imagine that every brick in this wall is a pixel in a camera. It's a light sensor. And I'm going to shine right here and light that up. And if I take a picture, what does that picture look like? Anybody? Take a guess. This is the only source of light in my scene. 
Yeah, a dot. Um, now, next question. Oh, oh good. All right, cool. Um, so I come over here, and I shine on that same brick. I take a picture. What does it look like? Same dot. Man, what a pain. That wasn't the same scene at all, but it looks the same on a 2D camera. And the idea there is that we didn't capture all of that information with a single 2D image. And it raises another question of, well, how could you? Maybe there are things you could do with a 2D camera to capture that information. One, and this is just a little spoiler alert, you could move the camera and take more than one image. Um, and then you could work out what changed. And by working out what changed, you could learn about how things worked in the scene. It's not fancy. You didn't do anything with wave fronts and lasers and crazy diffraction. You just moved the webcam. So I'm going to get into some of that later. But first, this does not it's, it's hard to talk about capturing images and light fields until you can talk about showing them off. So this is our most recent light field display. Um, and I'm just going to show it for like half an hour, like that, for 30 seconds or so. If you want to come play with them, we have a bunch kicking around here. After the talk, come play. It would be great. And then, then get on over to the other talk before Shana rings my neck. Um, so what's going on here is there's a lenticular lens. You all know what a lenticular is? You go to like a science museum gift shop, you turn a postcard, you see it animate as you move. Lenticular lens can show different views, can send different information to different angles. We have a screen with a lens, and we can send different views of a 3D scene out. Every frame here, we're, we're calculating 45 different views from 45 different positions, and we send those out. Your eyes see two different views, you perceive stereo depth. You move your head, you perceive parallax. And these are two really strong things that tell your brain, oh my god, there's something 3D there. Um, we think a lot about how we perceive three-dimensionality. Um, we're not vision specialists or neuroscientists. When I say we think a lot, I mean we make up some stuff and then we show it to groups much like yourselves and we're like, do you like it? Um, and that's a pretty good empirical proof if we got something good or not. Um, so we can capture and display a light field this way. We can send different images captured from different perspectives out into the world. And that's kind of what a hologram does, is it shows a scene from many different perspectives all at the same time. Whereas if there's two people looking at a hologram, we each see different things based on our vantage point. Our eyes see two different things, because our eyes have two different vantage points. That's kind of the power of this idea. Um, well, so I mentioned this idea of being able to move a camera and capture, and I wanted to kind of bring this, like hammer this home, that you don't need fancy imagery, you can capture with a webcam. What? You can capture with a webcam? Yes, you can capture with a webcam. I don't, okay, there we go. Okay, anyway, skeptics, y'all shut up. Uh, I need a volunteer, you're that guy. All right, uh, what's your name? Cedric, we're gonna capture a hologram of Cedric. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is this is a camera rail. So this is a single axis motion rail with a run-of-the-mill Logitech webcam tucked on top. Um, Evan here designed it, um, and then it has a bunch of extra wires hanging off to look fancy. Now, what's gonna happen is this camera's gonna move and capture an image from 32 perspectives, and then I'm gonna show you how it looks. Cool? All right, so I need you to hold a pose, but I want you to hold a pose with passion, something dramatic. Yes, now that's, that's what I'm looking for. All right, all right, ready? Here we go. Twelve images, sixteen images. We're getting closer. All right, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-two. All right, Cedric, thank you. Um, and now I want to show you um, what that looks like. Um, okay, so with this relatively fancy dis camera technology. Here's Cedric from many different angles. And, uh, oh my god. Uh, and what I want to point out is that as I move this camera, you see him move around. We're able to see from different perspectives that there is this idea of a three-dimensional guy. Um, and that's it. Uh, that's the basic idea of a light field. 
Now, of course, you can do more or less stuff with it. But that's the basic idea. So again, a hand for our hollow guy. Uh, Uh, and so in this case, this is a pretty simple camera. We move a camera, we tell him to hold super still, which he does very well, and after like 15 seconds, or as long as, as quick as we can do to move to different angles, we capture many different perspectives of him. But that only works for stills or for things that move really slowly. What if we want to do video? Uh, back, and then here, I'm back this in. This I'll just mute. Um, so uh, this is a similar technique. But this is a video I shot of myself in the lab. Um, and I'm just moving a camera to kind of give you a sense that this is captured from many different perspectives. Um, and uh, here I'm just kind of moving all around this lab to, to show like, what it's like at different levels of focus. Um, one really interesting thing about holograms is that you change, when light field captures, is you change focus in post. When you capture more than a single 2D image where you you select out the light rays you're going to pay attention to. When you have a multitude of light rays, you can shift focus around. You can shift capture around afterwards. And that's a very different style of image manipulation. Those of you familiar with Lytro have played with this. If you ever saw a Lytro camera with the click to change like on the bee and then on the flower in the background, back to the bee. Um, that's kind of the power of light field. It has some extra information that tells you more than a single photograph does. So back to the video, uh, so how do you capture this? Well, uh, you need a camera. You can't move cameras anymore because now you have a bunch of cameras, so you, uh, you do this. Um, uh, the underwater part is just extra fun. Um, but uh, is the, that video is captured on land. But this is uh, from a separate project with National Geographic filming some manta rays as holograms. Um, this is a gigantic stick with 32 GoPros. Running unsynchronized, there's zero fancy things. This is just off-the-shelf hardware. And again, that's one of the powerful things that I want to get across here is that you can capture light field information. You can capture holograms using random stuff, using like very unfancy, off-the-shelf things that are accessible that you can play with. And I think that's part of the power. Um, also, manta rays are great. Um, and how does that look? Well, here's the manta rays and a hologram. Um, and Again, it's kind of playing with this idea that there is a tiny manta, that we've captured this 24-foot wing-to-wing, it's bigger than this stage, uh, animal, and we've shrunk it down in the same perspective that we saw it when we were there and put it onto a desktop. And these things feel powerful. They feel exciting. It feels like something that we can't do any other way. Um, it feels like a different way to kind of digitally transport a scene somewhere else. Uh, so. I kind of gave you an overview of where we are right now with techniques that we can use to capture, with techniques we can use to display. And I'm not going to get into the weeds on the, the ways our displays work beyond this or the captures work. If you want to, come find me. I'm happy to talk. But what I want to do is kind of take the, the place where we are right now, which I'll call clumsy town, uh, where we're kind of at the limits of what we can do with technology. We're capturing as best we know how to do. We're building stuff which is full of piles of hot glue and wires. This is a great place to be because we're kind of pushing at the very edge of what we know how to do. And I want to extrapolate this a little bit from where we are to where I think we're going to be in, oh, I don't know, uh, a few years. So let's talk about it. So one is, uh, when I captured this light field of Cedric before, we represent this. That's a set of 32 pictures. And we just we do a very simple hack. We tile all those together into one big picture. Nothing fancy. We do a, sh a little shift to align everything. But we call that a quilt. It's just a bunch of images stacked up one after the other. Um, and, but what's exciting about that is we've represented it as an image. Images are compressible. Images are transportable. Images are easy to move around. So let's talk about what we can do when we can transport that image when we can start to capture 3D information and move it from one spot to another. Um, and that's not a huge stretch of the imagination. In fact, uh, like two days ago, we just did this thing with Vimeo, where we introduced the first light field uh, channel on Vimeo. And this was two of these very nice guys at Vimeo Creator Labs, where we represented quilt videos, light field capture sets of real and virtual things. 
And now you can, uh, we're very, we have a set of videos, actually today, this morning, someone who is not one of us, who I don't know, uploaded their first video into this set, which is cool. Um, and I feel like this is not, we're not gonna have to wait that long before I can go back, sit on my couch, put my feet up on the chair and hologram and chill. That's a cool future. Um, but I wanna even think beyond that. Uh, one of the interesting uh, questions about holograms and light fields, which is really hard to talk about. When we talk about capturing in 2D, we talk about resolution. When we talk about how good we are at taking that thing and making a, a, a digital replica of the thing. We say, okay, I captured it with one megapixel, two megapixels. And what that's really kind of a shorthand is saying, I captured it down to this level of detail. With light fields, it's a harder measurement. Do you say, I captured 28 billion of the rays in the room? Like, how many rays are in the room? I don't know, it's like asking like, how many angels dance on the head of a pin? Or maybe there's some physicists who actually have an answer to this. I don't have an answer to this. Um, but the question is, what's the perceptual limit of a light field? When did you capture enough rays? And perceptual limit, I think, is neat, where you say, if I have a light field and I capture a certain amount of that information and I have a display that can show that amount of information, when can you no longer tell the difference between the thing? Like let's say I'm standing behind glass and I captured a light field of myself and then I have a display behind glass which is showing a light field of myself. When do you know which is the clone and which is the real one? Like that's some Jedi shit. That's not that far off. Like that's seriously in Luke land. Um, so I'm just gonna bounce off kind of a scenario even further where I showed you like this first light field cameras which, ca which have an idea of dimensionality and space. The displays we have show into one direction, like, the, like a 50 degree cone in one direction. Our cameras capture from one angle. But let's imagine, and I don't think this is a huge stretch, that you take a camera like that and you adapt it. You make a camera that can capture a scene, a light field of a scene, from many, many different perspectives. And in this little dealy do, every one of those little blobs is a camera looking around. Imagine that we're, instead of just capturing one aspect of a scene, that we have a fixed camera that's capturing the entire three-dimensional, the hollow of the gram, if you will, that we're capturing the whole light field of a scene. And because we're in the future, we can just transmit that information. So I showed you going around in the ocean and capturing some holograms of a wonderful scene in the ocean, more or less from my perspective with a holographic camcorder that I built. So I wanna bounce this idea off you of, instead of that, throw a fixed camera in the ocean, which is capturing like a 100 foot diameter, 100 foot tall cylinder of the ocean, and beaming that out to the holoquium, um, where we've captured a digital replica of a scene like this, where I can stand in the middle of a city and look up and feel perceptually like I'm at the bottom of the ocean. Because, and this is important, when you're at an aquarium, the only sense you have to interact with stuff behind glass is your vision. Nothing else, you don't hear it, you don't taste it, you don't smell it, you don't touch it. Uh, and if we can play with vision, if illusions become sufficient enough that you cannot tell the difference between reality and not, that feels like a powerful place, a wonderful place to live. It plays with how we show things in nature, it plays with how we bring ourselves and how we bridge physical divides, how we can send ourselves around. It plays with a lot of things. So what I wanna get across is we're starting to play with stuff. By starting, I mean, we've been doing this for four years. But we've been starting to play with stuff that feels really powerful. It feels very different, both in the terms of the ways we display stuff, the ways we interact with it, the ways we can capture things in the world, and the ways we can use our technology to facilitate how we interact with things in the real world and in virtual space. And another thing which I think is important is there's nothing fancy going on here, and we are not fancy people. We are sometimes fancy people, but we are not that fancy. What I mean is, this is something anybody in this room can do. We're using very regular, off-the-shelf hardware, and we're just experimenting with these ideas. And there's not a lot of people experimenting with them now, um, but I think this is a fantastic place to work. I think it's a fantastic place to explore, and there's a lot of unexplored territory. And if this is exciting to you, then, Join the party. Thanks. <laughs>